So welcome to another edit here at NB and tonight is my homage to the amazing Karl Lagerfeld and the news of him passing away early in 2019 I think touched the majority of the fashion industry all around the globe. He was responsible for cuts on clothing that will quite honestly never be made again. And I was fortunate enough to work on the Sam McKnight team assisting backstage at Chanel on the 5th of March uh, and the Grand Palais. And, you know, I'm so privileged to be on that team. You know, Team McKnight are a bunch of creative individuals from all over the world. And we come together and we work on the biggest shows. And if it wasn't for Sam being such a creative genius and being such a legend, then this, this, this edit wouldn't even work. This edit wouldn't even exist. And the inspiration that I'm going to show you wouldn't even be there. So, you know, thank you, Sam, for everything that you've given me. And this is another example of inspiration right here. So, what was the hair like? It was the subject of many people's decisions and questions and, and discussions. We were thinking, oh my God, it's going to be X, it's going to be Y. Well, actually, in the typical position that Chanel is, it was elegant, sophisticated, and beautiful, and really simple. So, obviously, I am going to show you that, and I've also prepared a little bit of the hair. So, if we could just look at the beautiful Mika, who sat right there. Mika is going to be um, my interpretation of the look for Chanel and she's a real kind of great example. She's a young girl and she's cool, she's got her own little kind of look going on and because the heritage of Chanel is goes all the way back to Coco's realm when she used to design for them, there's this sort of, is it old fashioned? Is it for the modern young woman? Yes it is, because it's how they wear it and the hair is very elegant too. So I've gone in and prepared Mika's hair using some smoothing and shining oil by Wendell and Moody. Now again, oil has a bad reputation for making the hair dull, making the hair heavy, making the hair greasy. So I've gone in there and used about four pumps of this, four or five pumps, and I've equally distributed the oil throughout the head. Now, just take a little look at this hair. Does it look oily? Nope. Does it look greasy? Nope. It looks light and voluptuous and the hair just moves quite innocently. So yeah, I've gone in with a, just a natural parting in the centre um, and just prepared the hair because it's going to be off the face this, this look. And there's a little hair accessory that we've had to make ourselves. So, I'm going to go in and just put like an effortless wave through the hair. I want it to have movement but no curl. So if I can just grab that small babbleless proton, this one here, I'm gonna show you, as I have done before, how to make hair look effortless. And you'll be thinking, my goodness, that looks like quite a small tongue, and it is. So we go in, and we go in and we wrap the hair. When we get to the end, we let go and we pull it, and what you get is that. Now actually, that's a little bit too corkscrewy, so we're just gonna knock that out, and you can see now suddenly, it just looks effortless. And we're gonna do that to the whole head. I'll give you one more. On this one, I'm going to go the other way, and let go. So this is the way Sam tells us to do it, and he is the boss. So I'm just going to spin all the way through this here, speed it up so that I don't bore you. So it's a very visual texture, very visual. You know, there's no rhyme or reason and you'll notice that I'm not using a comb because, because I don't want that ever so perfect texture, I just want it to look like that. There. Boom. This isn't a classic way of tonguing hair. And you can just see there, that's an ex a beautiful example of the bump. 
It's almost slightly effortless beach. It's almost. And again, going in, winding and twist. Winding and twist, get to the end, take it out. So maybe you can now see how that that hair is just really effortless. Is it a curl? No, it's not. Is it a bump? No, it's not. It's just really sophisticated and got a gorgeous finish to it. I am, however, just going to spend a bit more time on those pieces, just giving them a bit more of a finish because the hair was to look expensive and glamorous and like as if, you know, they were on a, well, I don't know whether he did actually see that because they were on a ski, ski lift. So I'm just using the tong and just really gently knocking that in. You can see the difference it makes already. Just gets rid of those sort of fluffy bits at the ends. And if I see a piece like this, I'll just grab it. Use the tong to get rid of the ends. And you just get that look. So the, the rest of the look was really simple. Um, it was created by Sam and you know the genius that he is, it was the way he placed this little class back which just made it look unreal. So I'm going to ask my assistant Oliver just to step in now and he's going to help me because it is a two-handed job. Um, and I'm just going to take a section down through the side from the just in front of the ear down to the ear now it doesn't need to be razor sharp this section if I can just show you there you can see it okay I'm just going to take it on a slight more diagonal because if you've got less hair at the front you might need to take a bigger section if you've got more hair at the front then obviously you need to get a smaller section because we want this to go back this is going to go back hold that there that would be wonderful now the reason I'm asking him to do that is so that it's away because I'm gonna grab these two front pieces and bring them back and fasten them in a low ponytail on top of the hair right where that tail comb is and Oliver's gonna tie it off so you just bring your hand down a bit lower Great. so clasping the hair I want the hair to go back over the top of that hair that's been held down. So just with my tail comb, just helping it guide. Like so. And then this side, the same. And I'm going to use some modern hairspray afterwards just to get rid of, make sure that this is all lovely and neat and tidy. So I'm just going to get my position first of all. Before you let go mate, just going to get this, spend a little bit of time just tying up all these little hairs so that it makes the process really effortless. Now I want to go down low because we want to show off the head shape here. And you can see how I'm just fastening it in there. Okay. So Oliver's going to get a piece of elastic and he's just going to tie this off for us. Now if you don't know what elastic is, elastic is just a piece of shearing thread that allows us to be able to put tension in, in with the tie. You can see, look where the tie is, it's below the occipital bone which is here on the head to give that beautiful elegant head shape. Okay, that's one tie and one more, please. Great, mate. Perfect. That's fabulous. Thank you. And you'll probably have scissors because you're a great help. And we can just get rid of that. I'll hold it. You cut it right at the base. <laughs> So, 
you can get me some modern hairspray. Actually, it's there. I'm just going to, just gently, seal that back the way. Now you'll notice that this, there's no combing, virtually. We did not, he did not want it brushed. It was to look really effortless. And if you just see from the profile, how that ponytail snugly fits in, that was the genius part. That was the part that made the look just come together. So effortless. But that's why Sam is such an, a legend. Because his eyes, the detail, and you can imagine all these girls walking down the runway, one after the other, with this gorgeous head-hugging clasp. And that's kind of the, the way the hair was prepped. So everything was behind the shoulders, and you can just see now how, I might just massage a little bit more oil in there. But what we've done, in the interest of fashion, we have, we have tried to make our own interpretation of the accessories from Chanel. Now obviously, we don't have seamstresses working tirelessly through the night to make this so. But we're going to just join this and disguise it so it looks really elegant and sophisticated. So these are just really simple little clips, okay, from a local shop. And I'm gonna go behind the bobble of the elastic into the center and fasten it. Okay. Now I'm gonna open the one below it and do the same. And I think that just works. Just take the tail comb. And if you, you can see how it's low, and you can see the detail. Just straighten them up. Check out this the, the end result here. You can see that the hair has got this lovely head shape. And that's been achieved by the two side pieces clasping back into a low ponytail below the occipital bone. That is key to this look. And you can actually also see that the tonguing that's been done is very, very natural. There's no curl to the hair. Tongs don't need to always make hair curly. So if you can just turn slightly to the other way there, Mika, you can also see that the hair looks luxurious and moisturized and expensive and polished. That's what Sam wanted. And again, if you just turn and look towards me, you can see that how that, how the side part of the ponytail just goes all the way back into the baseline and it's gorgeous with her own natural little color. I think she rocks it. Thank you.